What's up guys, it's your boy Jabba Boy 188 here and I am going to be doing the Singapore Grand Prix as Sebastian Vettel who won it last year. So I'm going to be doing a 25% uh, race which is a 15 lap race. Uh, uh, legend difficulty, hold up. Yep, legend difficulty, safety car on, weather conditions on dynamic. And here is uh, the track guide for Singapore. Okay, here we are on a lap of Singapore. We've got this double left-hand corner as the last one to open up our lap. So make sure we get a nice clean exit on this one. DRS and a boost of curves on the run down towards turn one. Pit buildings on the left-hand side, mark boards on the right. Bumpy into here. Use a lot of the curve, but not too much around the next right. Flick it into the left, slow it all down, and watch that traction on the exit. You don't want the car to break into wheel spin there. Over to the left-hand side now. Bring it over as close as you can to the curb to open up turn five as much as possible. Use all of the curb, get as close as you dare to that wall before the longest straight on the circuit and a great chance to overtake cars in towards turn seven. DRS deactivated under braking, down into second gear. Watch the exit curb, not too much of that. Bring the car to the left-hand side, down into first now. Watch the traction once more, bumpy on the exit here, before bringing the car over to the right, and then left again. Open up this corner and use all of the track available on the run down towards a Singapore sling chicane, turn 10. Aggressively does it over the curbs, but not too aggressive because it's easy to end up in the barrier on the right-hand side. Now, flick the car to the right, and then the left. Watch that traction on the exit. We go over the bridge now towards turn 13. Straight line braking, down into second gear. Watch the traction on the exit. You want to get as close as you dare to the barrier on the right-hand side. DRS and a boost of curves again sees you towards turn 14. Break in a nice straight line from the entry here. But watch that traction again on the exit. That curve can suck you in towards the barrier. Straighten the car up now in towards turn 16 as much as you can. And hold back your speed so you can open up turn 17. Now we're heading towards this tricky corner under braking. Easy to lock up the left-hand front wheel here. Under the grandstand, the track's incredibly slippery. Use all the curves that you can and as close as the barrier as you dare. The inside curve of turn 20 allows the car to hold the line and then allows you to open up the exit of turn 21 short blast of drs before lifting you back off again and into that last double apex left hander use all of the curb available and that's a lap of singapore so here we go folks also quick up uh, a quick update uh, on my channel uh, obviously on wednesday i'm going to be uploading the forza race build I'm going to be doing the Audi TT. Now because, uh, because the Nissan Silvia, which is my first episode uh, car, didn't get uh, sold on auction, I am going to be keeping them as memorabilia uh, on my garage. You know, maybe for, you know, you know, for the occasional use out on the track. So, yeah, folks. So I start fifth on the grid. I'm gonna be yeah, I'm gonna run the option tire for this race. I'm gonna be running the normal fuel strategy. High and low, downforce and speed. Car prepared, let's go. So here we go guys. So, Schumacher on pole position, Mercedes 1 2, Vettel in 5th. I don't know where my teammate is, I think he's 10th. No, wait, he's, uh, no, he's in 9th. So, here we go, folks. 1 like, 2 likes, 3 likes, 4 likes, 5 likes. And it's like that, and away we go. Singapore getting a good start off the line, and side by side with Alonso. Almost going side by side with Hamilton. Alonso getting the inside line passing uh, uh, Hamilton. I'm going alongside uh, both Alonso and Rosberg as we head out of uh, turn two. Now on to this next corner. Running wide. Schumacher covering the inside as we head down the main straight. 
Then I'm getting a good run on Schumacher as we come down to this next corner, breaking hard, and we take the lead of the Singapore Grand Prix. But Schumacher, Schumacher having a look, uh, Schumacher having a look, but nowhere to go as we head into this next corner, breaking hard. Car really, really understeering through the first lap, all because we've got a uh, massive fuel uh, loads uh, in the tanks. Oh, a little bit of a clouting to uh, a clout of the wall there. Hit nail of that hairpin there down the main straight, breaking at the 100 meter mark. Oh, running a bit wide there, making a little mistake. Then heading under the grandstand. Good exit. Oh. Now down to this final, uh, down onto these final double uh, left corners. On to the pitch straight, 151.9, uh, 9 tenths between me and Schumacher. So, really what I want to do is I want to break the one second uh, DRS window. So that when, I'm a sec when the DRS is activated, I won't be under pressure with DRS. So, I won't be under pressure from those guys with DRS. So... That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do the old Vettel strategy by pulling, getting the out of the one second window. Oh, a little bit of mistake there, and clouting the wall there. I'm going to use my flashback again. Sorry for those mistakes, guys. It's just taking pause really hard. Really hard track, to be honest. Breaking hard at the 100 meter mark. Running a little bit deep there. Running deep. So it's going to be a dry race, which is good news. As we head out of this corner. Got Schumacher hot on my tail right behind me as we head into, Sing into the Singapore sling. A little bit of a clout at the wall. Heading out of the hairpin. Oh, a little bit of mistake there. Gonna use my flashback again. So, Singapore. Not one of my favourite tracks, to be honest. It's not, it's not my favourite tracks, you know. My favourites is, uh, are Silverstone, Spa, Monaco, just because they're so legendary. Silverstone because of Maggots and Beckett's, and because it's my home track. Spa because of Eau Rouge and its history, and Monaco because of the glamour and the history. But Singapore, you know, it's not really one of my favourites. I really like it, to be honest. It's not my cup of tea, to be honest, so... And yeah, uh, my favourite Singapore Grand Prix would have to be 2012. You may remember with Hamilton uh, retiring from the race in his McLaren um, with, I think, it, I don't know, I think it was a hydraulics problem. Uh, as we set the fastest lap, 146.5. And yeah, Vettel uh, snatching the lead of Hamilton and uh, going on to win the race. Uh, Schumacher behind me there, uh, running uh, last year, running into the back of jean Eric Verne, uh, down, I don't know, down our, uh, after the bridge, and um, bit of luck for him there, but that's racing, and uh, Massa getting squeezed out by his Senna, coming out of the Singapore sling, and uh, yeah, we've seen a lot of good action uh, last year, so that's the reason why it's my favourite Grand Prix, because uh, all the other years haven't got a lot of good memories, you know, where 2012 has because of Hamilton and all that, and so that's the reason why it's one of my favourites, because it's had the most action involved uh, on that year.
and uh, Singapore. You may remember the first race, 2008. You may remember also Massa. Uh, Massa in his title challenge, you know, uh, having a bit of a mistake in the pits. Uh, where um, the f where uh, Ferrari where Felipe went uh, with the fuel hose uh, attached to his car, that you know that dropped in down right to the back of the grid, and also um, with the Force India, oh, I think it was Sutil uh, running into the into the uh, into the barriers at the grandstand area, and um, so yeah, it's really and uh, at the end there, uh, Fernando Alonso wins the race, but. But, 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 Renault getting a, uh, Renault uh, next year had a problem in, two, uh, in 2009 where they were investigated for um, that incident in 2008 uh, where Nelson Piquet went into the wall uh, coming into uh, the grandstand area and uh, that sparked up loads and loads of, you know, talks, you know, with the FIA and Renault and um, as a result, um, IGN, you know, uh, pulled out of uh, Renault's sponsorship, and uh, yeah, and that really put and um, it all and uh, the FIA as a result banned um, they banned uh, F uh, Flavio Briatore and um, oh my god, I forgot that other guy. Oh no, I, there was another guy that got banned. No wait, yeah, yeah, he did get banned. Yeah, so it was Flavio Briatore and. Um, I don't know, there was another guy, I don't know what his name is, but he was quite big uh, at Renault, so, uh, yeah. And uh, Nelson Piquet, you know, and um, Fernando Alonso not uh, getting, uh, not strip, uh, FIA not stripping for Fernando's win there. I was quite surprised that they didn't uh, strip uh, Alonso's win because, you know, because Alonso really didn't deserve that. I think it was just a bit of cheating going on. And, um, you know, I really do think they should have got banned. Uh, I, I really do think that uh, Renault should have got, um, uh, should have. I, I really do think that the FIA should have, you know, stripped uh, Alonso's win because he really didn't deserve it. I think uh, Rosberg or Hamilton deserved it because they did not do any cheating. They they drove their hearts out and um, they obeyed the rules. So yeah, I I really do think that. Fernando should have, you know, been uh, should have, you know, got disqualified. But you know, that's life. So, and yeah, moving on to that year, 2009, Hamilton winning the race, comfortable win there. Vettel um, really pressuring him until he got a drive-through penalty for speeding in the pit lane, and then Webber uh, having a brake problem and going into the wall. And in 2010, 2010. The big one happened, and that was Mark Webber going into Lewis Hamilton. That was, um, that was, uh, wait, yeah, yeah, that was, uh, Mark Webber going into Hamilton, coming out, out uh, uh, coming out of the straight there. That put Hamilton out of the race. Real bitter luck for him there. And, um, uh, as a result, um, and, um, and then, uh, uh Sorry, uh, and then Alonso winning the race for Ferrari, taking their first win, taking the, uh, his second win, and his first pure victory uh, at Singapore. And then in 2011, first victory for Sebastian Vettel as he took the win uh, in his Red Bull. Just a total dominant race for him there. And then in 2012, obviously, you know, Sebastian doing it again after Hamilton blowing up his engine and retiring from the race. See so, yeah, it. Singapore's had a lot of good memories, and um, yeah, like I said, 2012 being my favourite. So yeah, folks. And um, also, um, Kimi Raikkonen is going to be moving to Ferrari um, uh, with, uh, and he's going to be partnering Fernando Alonso. Now. Um, I think it's a good. Uh, I think it's a good move that Raikkonen has done because he knows the team. He knows, you know, he knows, you know, the team very, very well from his earlier days. He's very, very good in Ferrari. He he's won a championship in Ferrari, and um, I really do think it's going to be the case of uh, Hamilton and Alonso or Alan Prost or Ayrton Senna. 
type thing, you know, going on with Ferrari. I think it's going to be that sort of rivalry going on. And uh, I really hope it doesn't become, you know, a negative rivalry. I hope it becomes a positive rivalry because I'd love to see them, you know, see who comes out on top and who doesn't. So, yeah, I, I can't wait for next year in terms of Ferrari. And um, in terms of Red Bull, I forgot to say that Daniel Ricciardo is going to be driving for Red Bull next year. Great, great, jo uh, great uh, job for Ricardo. I really do think he's going to really push Vettel hard during uh, next year because Ricardo is really quick. You know, he's been massively consistent. He's been uh, digging those points real hard, and um, he's done a really good job with Toro Ross And um, you know, he's learned a lot. You know, since uh, since uh, you know coming to the Formula One. You know, he's learned a damn lot and. Um, I really do think he's, he, he could win the championship, you know, with Red Bull, you know, because he is really quick, and um, I've loved um, his uh, driving and his skill um, in every race that I see him in. So yeah, I I am uh, I can't wait to, uh, for that little rivalry uh, next year for Red Bull. In terms of Mercedes, I'm not quite sure. I I don't think. Hamilton and Rosberg are, are going to move or change. I don't think Hamilton is. I think it's a definite uh, that Hamilton's going to stick uh, stick with uh, the team. For Rosberg, I don't know. Um, he's been with the team since 2010, and um, this is his fourth year with them. And um, you know, I don't think he should leave. I think he should do a couple more years, and then yeah, I think call it. So. You know, I don't think it's the end. I don't think this year will strike the end for Rosberg and Mercedes. I think there's more. Uh, I think there's going to be a, a, a longer, more future for the young, uh, for the German. And for Lotus, I don't know who's going to replace it. I think I really hope it's Nicholas Prost because I've seen him in uh, the young driver test, and he's pretty quick for Lotus. You know, he's been really doing good jobs uh, for them. He's been really, really quick. Uh, in Le Mans, so I really do think it's going to be Nicholas getting the drive there for Lotus. So yeah, so that's those are my little 2014 predictions for next year. And um, let's return back to the action because I'm about to come into the pits. I'm going to be changing to the option tyres. I'm going to be changing to the prime. Sorry, my bad. And um, sorry about, I forgot to say, sorry about my voice. I've just been really having a massive cold uh, throughout this weekend. Um, sorry about that. Hopefully it will be gone by Wednesday. Fingers crossed. So yeah. So coming out of the pit lane, here go, there goes my teammate Webber passing me down into turn one. But he has got to pit. He has got to pit for new tyres, which means I'll take the lead. Of the Singapore Grand Prix. So coming on to the main straight onto Raffles Boulevard. Hold up, dude. Sorry about that. Yeah, like I said, just having a bit of cold going on. So 2.1 seconds, I'm not really going to push the car because I've been really pushing it, you know, throughout the last couple of laps, so I'm going to save my fuel just in case, you know, something goes wrong, or I get like a front wheel, or, you know, I spin out or do something stupid like that, I'm not going to, I'm going to use that as emergency now, I'm not, I'm going to save my fuel now, just, just, you know, be consistent with my times and just, you know, cruise this to victory. So I'm not going to go after Weber, for those who are wondering, because he will have to pit, and there's no point firing him. So I am 8 seconds ahead of a Schumacher, which is good news. Car really feeling good, it's a bit unstable through the curves, but that I think that's natural.
So coming on to this, uh, coming past the double left, Weber take are uh, going into the pit lane, which means I take the lead of the Singapore Grand Prix. Oh, little mistake there going on. 8.7. And yeah, folks, um, some of you have been saying that uh, in the comments that um, that uh, if you use curves on the low gears, um, I think one dude said it. Like if you said if you um, if you use curves on the low gears, like you could do you can uh, gain some speed, which I'm gonna do. You know, I've been thinking about that for so long, and um, you know, when I use curves, I use it at the start of lap because you know. Um, you know, it's the most comfortable and the most, and it's just, it's just a habit that I've got, you know. I have this real terrible habit of just using curves at the earliest part of the lap. So, yeah. So, come the end of this lap, I am going to be using curves probably, I'm going to probably use 25% uh, of curves at the earliest part of the lap, and then, and then uh, 75 later on the lap. So, that's what I'm going to do. It's just been a real habit, you know, the reason why, I, that's just, it's just been a real habit, this little curves early thing, lap. Coming into the uh, grandstand there, all turned in a bit too early there. Ooh, going into the wall there. You really got to be careful uh, when coming out of the corners, you really have got to be really really out of the cur of the walls there I know that's what Anthony Davidson says get as close to the walls you can but if you get too close you're gonna go straight it will just really mag uh, it w it's just like a magnet it will just draw you to the wall there so you've really got to be careful in terms of get um, getting close to the walls so on to lap 10 six laps to go Coming on to Raffles Boulevard, down the main straight. Breaking hard. Oh shit, I forgot. Oh damn it, I'll, I'll use it on the next lap, sorry about that guys. Yeah, I just forgot about that little thing that I, was gonna, I said a minute ago. I was just concentrating on just... I was just concentrating on uh, this lap and uh, the while I'm on. As I'm going to use my flashback. Just made a little mistake there. My favourite corner out uh, around this track is that little bit there, that Mickey Mouse section there, because it's so, so, you know, quick. And it's so, you know, tricky, because if you get it wrong, you're going to be in the wall like Kimi Raikkonen was in 2008. So you've really got to be really patient through there, you can't just rush it, you've just, so yeah, but really really tricky. Oh, a little bit of mistake there. One forty seven zero Breaking hard into turn on one. Down Raffles Boulevard using a little bit of curves down the straight. Down this next corner, cutting the corner a bit there. Gap now 9.9 .9 seconds. Coming into the Mickey Mouse section. Oh my god! Please tell me that I've. Oh wow, no, I haven't got curves. Coming down, is this going on? Oh no! Hitting the wall there. 
Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, come on, yes. Alright, we regate, we we still we're still in the lead, guys. Don't worry, I haven't lost the lead. But the gap has dropped. What is the gap? That's what I wanna know. That mistake might have cost me. I'm gonna have to push. What is the gap? Because I because that mistake probably took like three seconds. Yeah, it's four seconds. So I lost six seconds in that mistake there. Just put too much power, and uh, by the way guys, I'm using uh, no traction control, so yeah folks, traction control really coming out to bite me hard there. Coming on to lap 12, 4 laps to go in this Singapore Grand Prix, breaking hard into turn number one. A little bit of a mistake there. I'm going to start now pushing a little bit harder with the car now in these final couple of laps, even though I've got a comfortable lead. No, 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 come on, yes. These laps are getting really, really tougher now for me. Quicker, personal best, 5.1. Coming into the grandstand section, getting a beautiful entry and exit there. Absolutely beautiful. Oh my god! Carlos starting to, starting to make a little bit of mistakes now. That was so close. One forty seven point one. Come on. Three laps to go. Kind of bit of that curb there. Got to be really careful because if you do if you cut if you cut the corner really if you cut the corner a lot, you, you're gonna get a drive through. So you really gotta be careful when cutting the corners there. Three tenths quicker, coming into this next section. Ooh, running a bit too deep there. Really tr tricky section, always run wide there. Coming down the uh, the little bridge there, breaking hard. Four tenths quicker than my personal best. Personal best, I mean. And this is grandstand section. a little bit deep there or not too much it's a time 146.3 so I'm not far from my fastest lap whoa making a mistake no oh you are joking wow oh wow Oh my god, you are, oh wow, oh wow, you are having a laugh, wow.
You are got you've got to be kidding, I drove a really good race. But I have got to come into the pits, that is a huge blow to Sebastian Vettel, that is a huge blow to blow to me there. Oh wow, I Oh Going down the straight here, side by side with Schumacher. No, no, not gonna do it, not gonna do it, not gonna, not gonna commit. Well, that's just a stupid idea. Oh, wow, come on, you are having a laugh. I did so well. Oh, wow, I'm so done. Two laps to go, two laps to go, winning the bag. I felt like, alright, yes, win the bag, win the bag. But no, on the last two laps, Get myself my front wing broke. That is so, so. Oh my god, that is heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. I've, I've had worse. That, let's, let's, be tr let's be honest, I've had worse. Oh wow, I did so well. Why? Why? Eh? Oh my god. So, I've dropped down to third, I'm going to pick for options, might as well do that. Drop down to seven, drop down to eighth, ninth. Oh wow. If I can get... I really just got to hope and pray I end up in the points. I really want to end up in the points, because if I end up outside the points, I, I don't know what I'll do. Please, I seriously want to end up in the points. Oh my god, please be ahead, please be ahead, please be ahead. I want to be ahead of Ricardo, I want to be ahead of Hulkenberg. Come on! Get me ahead! Come on! Yes, I'm ahead, I'm ahead of... Yes, alright, cool. Alright, if I could stay in 10th, that would be great. That will... That will be great for me. The last thing I want is to get no points. That is the last thing. A little bit of mistake there coming out the exit of that corner, breaking hard into this next corner. Get a beautiful exit. Really don't want to make a mistake. I really don't want to make a mistake coming into this Singapore sling. Cannot afford a mistake now. There, Schumacher coming into the last section of the track as I'm heading also into this last sector. And there we go, Sebastian uh, Schumacher takes the win. But where am I going to fish? Is this going to be a 10th or will I have to settle pointless? Coming into this last section, come on, come on. Through the last corner, and there we go, 10th place. Started out in 5th place, worked my way up to 1st, but then dropped to 10th because of, uh, I lost my front wing on the last two laps. Real bit of luck for me there, but that's just racing. These things can happen all the time. See ya, folks. There, my teammate finishing in 8th place. So there we go, Schumacher 1st, Nico Rosberg 2nd, Fernando Alonso 3rd, Roy Magration 4th, Felipe Massa 5th, Jensen Button 6th, Kamui Kobayashi 7th, Mark Kobe 8th, Daniel Ricciardo 9th, me in 10th which is Sebastian Vettel, 11th was Nico Hulkenberg, 12th was Pastor Maldonado, 13th was Bruno Senna, 14th was uh, Jean-Luc Verd, 15th was Sergio Perez, 16th was Lewis Hamilton, 17th was Shot Peak, 18th was Noreen Karkin, 19th was Paul Dresta, 20th was Vitaly Petrov, 21st was Timo Glock, 22nd was Heike Kovalainen, 23rd was Pedro De La Rosa, 24th was Kimi Raikkonen. So there we go guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye, um, and um, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye YouTube.